continue with our fool study. We're up to fool number 73, still in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 12. And again, gotta say this over and over and over. If there's one thing the Bible does not want us to be, if there's one thing that God instructs us, and if there's one thing that Jesus Christ was never, it's foolish to be a fool. Fools no respect unless you pass laws to protect them. So Proverbs 17, verse 12. Let a bear yeah, excuse me. Let a bear robbed of her wealth, the little bearlings, meet a man. Rather, a fool in his folly. An angry bear who has lost her little kitties. Bears are something you don't mess with. I've seen programs about them. I've heard stories about them. Uh, a bear is something you can't run from. You can't climb a tree. And they're angry. You don't want to meet an angry bear you don't want to meet an angry bear that is missing their cubs and in the realm of an angry bear you better run into an angry bear and get your your hide chewed out clawed out killed stomped whatever a bear will do to you in the pain of agony then to have a fool in his folly a folly is what a fool produces. It's his product. And there is no reasoning So meet with an angry bear rather than a fool in his folly. This is a lot. From Psalm. Solomon says, if I were to have two things in my life, and the greater of the two would be, I would have an angry bear chase me than be a fool. Whew. Proverbs 17, 16. Wherefore, is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom? Seeing he has no heart to it, the wisdom. Here is a cause in the book of Proverbs. You're going to spend money on a fool who does not want the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We have pictured today the public education system and the vast amount of wasted money it does to educate fools who do not want to be educated and then when you got a fool in a classroom who doesn't care doesn't want to do who's going to grow up and go on welfare do illegal acts against the citizens of their country be an outcast you are stealing money, times, and funds and effort to someone who is willing to hear, willing to learn, willing to do something who is not foolish. On the average, it costs $10,615 to send a kid to a public school for a year. That's federal, state, and local government spending combined. That is, the NPR, how much does the government spend to send a kid to public school? June 21st, 2012. $10,615 to send that kid to a public school system. That money it takes that, that kid to, to, who doesn't want to learn, doesn't want to do anything. I could pay off my car right now, my used car, and some medical bills. With that money 
That money could be taken for a fool and put it to somebody who's wise and let them be wiser. You get a child $10,000, $11,000 every year, you give them to, to the school system, then they drop out and don't do nothing. I dropped out of school for a reason to do something. I don't want to talk about to do it early. But I, not only did I drop out of school, but I went to adult education and got my high school diploma. I just had plans. They're wise plans. I don't want to discuss it. But just to hurry up and do what I wanted to do, it was wise. I didn't drop out to drop out. I dropped out. One of the things I dropped out for, because I was at a technical school, I went into the lawnmower mechanic. My sophomore year, I'm like, this ain't going to get me no future. So I couldn't change my, my grades, couldn't, I mean, my classes. So I dropped out and went, got a high school diploma and, went and tried to improve myself. From K, kindergarten to 12th grades. 138,000, not including inflation. Is there, is there included buses, cafeteria food, workers? What does this amount include? And I had, well, whatever $138,000 from, from kindergarten to 12. And we're not including inflation. It gets higher and higher. But what about the buses? Those yellow buses. The bus drivers. The mechanic for the bus drivers. The office staff for the busters. The cafeteria food. The canned goods. The noodles. The spaghetti. The vegetables. The washing uh, machines for the, for the plates and the trays and the workers. And a custodian to clean the floors in the mess. So let's say 77 million students enrolled in October 2009. U.S. Department of Commerce Census. In 2009, there were 77 million students enrolled. At a report of a 19% dropout rate. 19% don't even finish. 19% you spent $10,000, $11,000 a year. And then they drop out and don't even finish. So let's make it easy. Let's say 10% dropped out by the second year of high school. 7,700 public school students. So from the $10,615 to send one student for one year for 7,700 students, eight billion one hundred seventy-three million five hundred fifty dollars thousand dollars eight billion dollars and if by the second year of the high school, 11 years, 900, $89,909,050,000, $90, $90 billion a year for students that drop out. Total cost to go all through the grades, $108 billion. And you get to drop out ninety billion. If they were, if, if they never finished, and the government spent one hundred and sixteen thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars on one dropout student for eleven years, and he becomes foolish, and his heart was not in it. For eleven years, that child, that fool, has gone to school. At ten thousand dollars a year, by the eleventh year, doesn't finish the final year, doesn't go one more year. You have put forth a hundred and sixteen hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars been wasted. 
because they didn't receive that paper that is needed for a job. Now, why did the government waste that money on food? That money could go on elsewhere. That money could go on for higher educating those who are smart and wise. That money can go on for homeless vets. That can go on for vets who need help. Why, why, why take care of a fool and not take care of the vets? That money can go on for a, 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 a woman who has children and her husband's left her to defend for herself. Listen, I'm not against welfare if you seriously really need it. When this great American economy system that we have of, uh, of the government we have that you're going to underpay your hard workers so they can't even afford rent. And then the people who have rent, they're going to keep raising. The Listen, worldwide today, rent is on its highest it's ever been. There are people who are living in cars are homeless because of the rent situation. And then we go spend money on foolish people not ever to finish. Maybe it'd be a lot different if every parent that sent a child to school, we charge them the bill. And I can rightly say that because I have two children. I can, my, 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 my son is finished. My daughter is going through homeschooling now. Everything with homeschooling, I have paid for my pocket. There are no buses. The books and everything she gets, I pay for it. I make sure she gets the math, English, science, and the stuff she needs. Not the junk she don't need. Can you imagine about all this that the foolish that they're teaching the public school system and their foolishness, how much lessons they're teaching that are not worthy of anything? All right, let's get off that. Proverbs 17, 21. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow the father of a fool has no joy whoa put that with the public school system children what's that one say parents the father of a fool is a shameful thing the father hangs his head down i got a fool And we're going to see quite often, we've already seen already, children that are fools are not a pleasure, they're not a help, and they are a sin to their parents. How are you doing as a child? Have you been a fool to your parents that you need to repent of before God the Father? If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of sins. Have you gotten it right with your parents? Are you doing what? You... Listen, when I got saved, I, the first person I witnessed to was my dad, April 26th. I witnessed my dad, April 25th, I got saved. Now, I don't know how long after that, this period, of time, but I sat down and wrote my dad a letter. I apologized for being this, the, the terrible son that I was. I've stolen money from him. And I put down that letter, I say, listen, whatever I owe you, you you put it down, I will somehow pay you back. Not only did I confess my sins to God, but I, I went and tried to make things right. My dad's not saved, he, he's not into religion, yeah. evolutionist. That's what he believe. I don't mean, you know, degree in evolution, but I mean, he, he favors towards evolution, but I'll tell you one thing. He's happy to tell his, his, his friends that he has a son that preaches and teaches the Bible. He, he, he's happy to say that, you know, his son graduated from seminary. I may not believe in the God that he that he, that he does, and God may be, a, may be a fruitcake how he thinks about some of the things that I do, but you know, that's my son. Say what you will, whatever he believes, that's my son. Well, hasn't he have done anything terrible to you? He's gotten it right. He asked for forgiveness. My son did a wicked thing to us, and, and isn't that my son got it right, repented, and made ends meet in a letter? 
getting right with God and confessing your sins with God and going to the person, whether it be your parent, a friend, a spouse, whoever, going to that person and making it right is not foolish at all. But here with the fool, with the, if you just keep continually making your parents ashamed of you, making just a mockery of your family name, it's a sin. It's foolish. The gray hairs that your parents have are you the cause of them. Proverbs 17, 24. Wisdom is before him that has understanding. Wisdom, wisdom and understanding together. You ready for a but? <laughs> but the eyes of the fool are in the ends of the earth. Again, you got the wisdom and un understanding contradicting the fool. Wisdom is before him that has understanding. So a man that is wise knows how to be wise, how to apply his wisdom. Knowledge is what you know. Again, the illustration I always get, I know a car. I know how to work on a car. I know how to start a car. I know how to put it in D. I know how to put it one, two, three, four. It's been a while on that one, but it takes, I, have, I could probably do it again. And wisdom is I get in the car, I start it, I put it in D, and I go somewhere. Understand is the relationship in the Bible to God. I will take that car and I will pick somebody up to go to Bible study. I will take that car, I will go to one of our ministries we have to get the gospel out. A wise man that knows about God will give to God. And in contrary to that, a fool has no wisdom, has no understanding of relationship to God. And his eyes are at the ends of the earth. They are lofty vision. Far away reality. His dreams are unapproachable. And he may even think there's a flat earth. If I can throw that in. He's got wild ideas that he can't do, will not do, will not reach out. It's incapable because he's a fool. And you match that back to what we said with the public school system. How many kids have been, the money has been spent for them to go through all the grades and they drop out and they, they, they got worthless life and they got all these great things. I'm going to go to California. I'm going to become a great actor with how many thousands, if not millions of them. I'm going to take my guitar and I'm going to make CDs and, and musics and all that with how many millions more that have done that. What are, you, what are the odds of you reaching out to that goal that maybe there could have been a better goal in your life? There are fools daily leaving the reality of world to go follow a stupid, dumb dream that will get you no advantage. Proverbs 17, 25. We don't have to go any further. Next verse. A foolish son is a grief to his father. Oh, here we go with the child again. And bitterness to her that bared him. Fools do not give their parents joy, verse 21. They cause sorrow, verse 21. And in verse 25, fools do not make the best children. Shame and sorrow. I love Pilgrim's Progress. I reread it and reread it. And I'm surprised because that would be a good person in the book of Proverbs for Christian to meet. The fool. He could probably do a whole chapter meeting the fool who his parents are shame, his parents are sorrow, and he's got his eyes off everywhere, and there's been money spent on him to no avail. The guy is just a fool in the folly. That's one character missing in Pilgrim's Progress, the fool. I bet your mom and dad don't brag about the fool 
mom would have a picture on the mantle. He's, oh, who's that fine man in the uniform? Well, that's my that's my son. Who's that? Who's that girl there in in the nurse's outfit? That's my daughter. What's that? What's that? Who's that? The head there. Who's that? That's just my son. Somewhere gone, but you know, he, I. You know, my son over here, he's been in Afghanistan. He, he was wounded and he went back in action. My daughter works at the most busiest house, or she works at the, you know, the poorest hospital in the city, but, you know, she loves her job. What about him? I didn't hear nothing about him. I don't want to hear anything about him. You know how many fools have left the public school system to be in jail? Their life has been jail. You know how many fools grown up to have children are fools and they are fools themselves? So, Proverbs 17, 28. Looks like a Proverbs 17 day. We had another chapter full of fools earlier. Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. Uh-oh. He that shutteth his lips is esteemed as a man of understanding. This is one of the very few good fools in the Bible. There are, I think, two or three cases where the Bible says a fool can be good. And this fool knows when to shut up and not speak. Husbands and wives need to learn this. You do not have to say everything that's on your mind. I have heard some foolish preachers out of the pulpit and teachers in evangelists that they have gone and said something very foolish. You did not need to say that. Even for fools, I got his mouth open, he's about to say it. Nah, never mind. I'm not going to say it. What? No, I'm not going to say it. The Bible says, look at that. Wise. But we've been reading so much in Proverbs about contradiction of wise and fool and fool and wise contradiction. And here Solomon writes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that there is a wise wisdom for a fool if he does not open up his mouth on every occasion. He holds it back. You know? The proper time to speak. And this fool knows when to speak. Now, I don't say how often. <laughs> it just says, hey, if he holds his peace. Even the fool, when he holds, and maybe he's challenged with a fight. Back it off. We had a couple, a couple of weeks ago, a time ago, we had, you know, the police came up to us. I stopped preaching. I told him, say, you know, sidewalk is government property. And I could fall. I said, "Listen, you know, we got we got a lawyer handling so something. I'm gonna get him on the phone. Try to get him on the phone." And I didn't badmouth the cop. I didn't fight him. I didn't, you know, we just everything I wanted to say should not have been said was not said. And there are things that, if it does not need to be said, give it time, pray about it. But the Bible says, "How every idle word that man." Jesus says, but man speaking, he shall give an account thereof. When that foolish man has shut his mouth, he won't give an account. Maybe the thoughts, but the words. All right, we got a Proverbs 18.2. Proverbs 18.2. A fool has no delight in understanding. Now, we already saw understanding Proverbs 17.24. But that his heart may discover itself. There is no want to be wise. There is no want to know. There is no want to understand. So he can believe what he believes is foolish. He is a fool and he wants it that way. Reach for your dreams. Go for your dreams. When you wish upon a star. When you can do what you're going to do, go with the gusto. Foolish, 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 
and the end result of that fool is why change? Why would I need to change? I'm happy just the way I am. He doesn't think he's a fool. He thinks he's doing okay. Proverbs 18, 6. A fool's lips enter into contention, fighting, argument. Remember we just did a fool is if he keeps his mouth shut. Here's a fool that's opened his mouth. And is brought in arguments and fights. And his mouth calls for strokes. A strife, a quarrel. No one wants to debate you in public. Nobody wants to debate you in a public ministry, fool. Strokes and beating with a rod. As a public minister that I am uh, preaching the gospel some fool will come up to me right then and there he wants to argue something no I will eventually end my preaching I will eventually start packing up and at that moment if you want to ask me questions and I'm not going to go in argument I'm not going to challenge you and you're not going to challenge me and there are people who just speak and they bring forth wrath and anger and do what that, that fool that got wise. Shut up. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but and again, Proverbs 18, 7. Continue with the mouth. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And his lips are a snare, a trap of his soul. Think of a snare as we already began with that bear. A snare would be a bear trap. Would be a mouse trap. A pit for a lion. A fool's mouth is his destruction. And he can cause destruction to others. A fool in a business can destroy the business there have been places I do not shop or go anymore because the fool that was the employee and destructions are hurricanes tornadoes havoc depression and a fool can cause that havoc in the home we've read 81 fools we've done so far and a fool can cause destruction in a workplace get the other videos get the other all the audios and hand them out get them free listen 81 foolish things that can cause a destruction in a church there is nothing worse for a church to have a foolish man behind the pulpit. There is nothing worse for a church to have a foolish man sitting in the pew. There is nothing worse in a family to have a husband play the fool. There is nothing worse in a family to have a wife that is a fool. There is shame and misery in a family if your children are full. There is destruction when in your business the head honcho is foolish. And there could be a decay of profit if in your business the employee is foolish. A fool would be a bad apple in an entire basket of apples. And we got a few 19s and 20s coming up. So I think we're going to do I think that would be a good stop right there. 81 few fools we've done so far. We'll stop at Proverbs 18.7. And i got to ask you. How are we doing? 
including myself, because I found myself to be a fool. 82 fools. And there are total uh, 189 fools. We got over 100 more fools to do. I found myself to be fool, foolish, and in folly. I found myself even doing this outline. I found myself, without you knowing, I found myself repenting of the sin of fool at times where I played the fool. And I've asked God while we're doing this study, Lord God, forgive me for doing that. Lord, I spoke about it, and I realized that's my own heart. I'm a hypocrite because I am speaking and teaching about something I've done, Lord God. Put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. Not all of them. And I'm not going to tell you which ones. What about you? How are you doing? There are many other videos. There are audios, YouTube, and SoundCloud. This is not the first study of the fool. There are many others to go through. Help yourself to them. Help yourself to all the, the lessons that we have. They're free to give out, free to share, fear, fear to, to put on whatever you need to put on. Free to give to your friends, give to your enemies. They're free to give to your pastor, give to Christians, give to non-Christians. Get them out. Because these videos are done by me for the for two reasons I'm in the ministry to, to preach the gospel Jesus Christ saves to the lost man that only by salvation through Jesus Christ and then number two if you're a Christian to help you grow in Christ so that's it 81 fools there's a lot 